Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside the Korean War Designer Signature Edition. This is a game designed by Joe Balkowski and published by Compass Games. This is a reprint of the 1986 version from Victory Games and it has been on reprint for quite a while. And there have been some delays along the way, but it is finally done and it is on the way to you now. It is here on my table, so we're going to take a look inside today. There have been some updates to the game, some to the rules, as well as the graphics and the way things are laid out with the player aids, which we'll see when we take a look inside. So let's take a look at the back of the box and see what this game's all about. The Korean War, June 1950 to May 1951 Designer Signature Edition marks the return of a true wargaming classic by Joseph Bokoski, first published in 1986, faithfully remastered and updated with this all-new supersized edition. Hailed by many as one of the premier games covering the Korean War, this two-player operational level simulation covers the first year of the Korean conflict from June 1950 to May 1951. This edition of the Korean War features a supersized map and larger counters and is another classic reborn by Compass. During this period, the United States found itself involved in a bitter struggle in a remote Asian land that many Americans had not even heard of. Amid the debacles and stunning victories of the first year of the war, the very foundation of the American military system, so recently triumphant in the Second World War, was severely shaken. In a war that few Americans understood, and which historians have tended to ignore, the foundation of future American diplomacy in the face of communism was laid. The players control ground and air forces of the United Nations, North Korea, and Communist China. Each player's force consists of a wide variety of units, including infantry, marines, paratroopers, armor, and aircraft. The map is a 1 to 750,000 representation of the Korean Peninsula from Pusan in the south to the Yalu River in the north. In addition to controlling military forces, the players must make a number of political decisions that have an important effect on the game. Above all, the UN player must strive to keep international tensions at a minimum for the purpose of preventing World War III. Intense escalation and mobilization could have disastrous consequences for the militarily unprepared United States. On the other hand, insufficient force applied to Korea could lead to the conquest of South Korea by North Korean communists. And you can see here the map and the counters that come with the game. And at the top, it lists the contents as four maps with an overall dimension of 42 and a half by 71 inches, three counter sheets, rule book, two charts and tables booklets, numerous player aids and displays, and one 10 sided dice. It is rated a complexity of seven out of 10, time scale is one month per turn. The map scale is seven and a half miles per hex. Unit scale is battalions, regiments, brigades, and divisions, and it is listed for two players. It's best at two or more. Suitability for solitaire is 7 out of 10, and the average time to play is 4 to 8 hours, depending on the scenario, with 20 plus hours for the campaign game. So let's take a look inside and see what you get. All right, we get 2D10. Said one on the back of the box, but we get an extra one. A rule book. Little tidbit of errata, the playbook, and a whole bunch of player aids. Our three counter sheets and our four maps. So let's set up the map, take a closer look at the game. And here's a look at the map that comes with the game. Actually, it's four separate maps that are going to join together and overlay one on top of the other to form the complete picture of the peninsula of Korea. In this shot, you're getting about 90 to 95% of the peninsula itself. What you're missing are some of the charts and tables that are on the top as well as on the bottom, and also a very small segment of the southern portion of Korea, and then the top right as well is cut off here in the frame. But you do see some of the charts and tables and tracks that are here on the map at the uh, top, the sides, and then you don't see anything on the bottom, but there are plenty of tracks and charts and tables, the same that you're going to find in the player aid card. So if you don't want to hold the player aid card in your hand, you can easily reference it on the map. But overall, a very impressive looking map, nice and big, and uh, looks really easy to read. The different delineations here for the provinces, as well as for the 38th par parallel, they're all easy to see. Then the terrain itself is exactly what you're going to find in Korea. These light colored hexes here, these are clear terrain. Next to that, you have the green, which is broken, and then tan, which is rough. The orange here, those are mountains. And then the brown is the mountain peaks. And as you can tell, North Korea is a very mountainous region. But overall, I think it is a fantastic reproduction of the peninsula of Korea. 
and we'll take a look at the player aids that come with the game. These are listed in order of cards one through eight, so we're gonna just follow the order that they're in. This is for the North Korean player. At the top, we have the combat results table, the armor table, the Soviet intervention table, and then at the bottom, we have the combat value modification chart. On the right-hand side, we have the die roll modifiers, as well as the abbreviated sequence of play. And on the back, we have the terrain effects chart, which gives you the movement cost for UN and NK units, as well as the command range and the information for the different types of terrain in the game, which we've already looked at when we looked at the map. At the bottom, we have the information summary. And the next player aid has the same information for the UN player. And the next card has the North Korean Depot, Initiative, Reinforcement, and Intervention tables. And on the back, it gives a breakdown of the counters and the different types of counters and markers that you'll find in the game. And the next card has the same information for the UN player on the front and the back. And the next card deals with the air power for the UN. You have your cast track, interdiction table, interdiction track, modifiers down at the bottom, as well as the air theater display on the right hand side. And on the next card, we have the UN reinforcement chart, the UN initial intervention reinforcement schedule on the front. And on the reverse side, we have the terrain chart, UN escalation chart, information summary, and the amphibious assault table at the bottom. And the next card deals with the advanced game. This is the game turn record breaking down all the steps for each of the turns in the game. And that continues on the reverse side all the way through game turn 12. And the final card is the mat for basic game scenarios 1, 2, 4, and 5, giving you all the tracks you'll need as well as the UN air theater display. And on the back we get the information for basic game scenario 3, all the tracks you'll need as well as the terrain effects chart once again. And the last two player aid cards are foldouts for both the UN and the North Korean player. This is all the information we've already gotten before, but now in a handy foldout format. So that way you don't have to shuffle through the different player aid cards. You can have them all right here in your hand. And we'll take a look at the counter sheets that come with the game. These are nice thick counter sheets like we've come to expect from Compass. On the left hand side, we have the North Korean units. On the right hand side, we have the Communist Chinese forces. National Chinese are on the bottom right and the Soviet forces are on the bottom left. Next, we have the U.S. forces, both Army and Marine Corps, Republic of Korea troops, and then the U.N. allied nations. One of the things I noticed, and I've already reported this to Compass, you can see the registers on these counters are a little off. In this instance, it is not optimal. It's usable, but it's definitely not optimal. I've already reported it to Compass, and if you have any issues like this, you can always report them to Compass at sales at compassgames.com, and they can get you out replacement counters. And on the final sheet, we have a mix of administrative counters that you'll be using throughout the game. Next, we'll take a look at the rules. This is a 40-page full-color rulebook. On the inside of the front cover, we have the table of contents, which will list all the rules out for you on the pages that they're in, as well as the playbook. Now, this is a 40-page rulebook, and it covers all the rules in the base game. In the playbook, there are advanced rules as well, so that's going to give you another 23 pages of advanced rules and scenarios in the playbook. Then we have the introduction, game equipment, and then a breakdown of the counters, how to read those, the types of counters in the game, and the nations that are represented in the game, as well as the administrative counters, a listing of abbreviations, and then a little breakdown on the map. Now, this is a giant map, but keep in mind that only three maps will be used in four of the five scenarios in the game. So you're not going to need uh, the entire map on the table for every scenario. Now, for the campaign, obviously you will, but not for every scenario. Something to bear in mind. Then we start with the sequence of play on page seven. Breaks down all the steps for the different portions of your turn, units and terrain, the different types of units, terrain features, zones of control. Then we get into supply, depot, depot placement, supply status, supply points, how you expend your supply points. And you see these written examples that are sprinkled throughout the book that'll give you a better explanation as to how all the steps work. Then we have an illustrated example of play here on page 14. Then we get into operations, the different types of operations that are available to you in the operations sequence. Again, a written example. Then we have the activation, which units can be activated, how you perform your actions, how you end your activations, moving actions, attack actions, entrenching actions, fatigue, and then we get to assets, restrictions and transfer of assets, reassignment of assets, how you handle those in the game. And then we get to combat here on page 20, all your combat values in North Korean garrisons, U.S. non-armor units, armor assets, initiating combat, attacking units, defending units, how to perform your combat is all explained to you. And then you have a two-page illustrated example of play here on page 22. Then we get into the combat modifiers, all explained to you, Chinese wave attacks, 
maximums for modifiers, combat results, how those are all handled, retreats, combat and fatigue, reorganization and amalgamation. UN forces will reorganize and all other nations will do an amalgamation process. UN amphibious operations, amphibious capacity, amphibious assaults, activating or assault units, beachhead markers, UN parachute units, which is an optional rule you can use or not use as you see fit, reinforcements, reconstitution, and enhancement. You have reinforcements, NK reinforcements, UN reinforcements, and then UN reconstitution, destroyed unit reconstitution. Then we get to control of city hexes, cities and ports, production centers, how those are all handled, air missions, you have cast missions, interdiction, and how that's handled, and then your limitations on air missions. Then we get to the special rules on page 39, special rules for game turns one and two, and then the winter game turns, and then on the back of the rule book, we have the index. And next, we'll look at the playbook. This is a 40-page full-color book. The inside of the front cover, we have the table of contents listing out the different scenarios for you. You have the five introductory scenarios, then you get into your advanced game rules, the advanced game scenario, and then some historical notes after that. Scenario one, the invasion of South Korea. This is how all the scenarios are going to be set up. They're going to give you the listing of all the units, where they're going to be placed, as well as victory conditions, special rules, and the game length. Then we get to scenario two, the United Nations strikes back. Scenario three, the Chinese intervene. Scenario four, the United Nations resurgent. Then scenario five, defeat into victory. Then we get to the advanced game rules here on page 15. And these are going to be additional rules that are going to go on top of the base game rules. And you can see here, commitment of UN forces, UN initial intervention, US mobilization, UN rules of engagement, UN escalation, global tension, historical UN commitment. You see there's more to it already. Communist Chinese forces as well as the Soviet forces, how they're going to be handled in the game. Chinese attack value bonuses, Chinese initiative period, and then the nationalist Chinese forces. Then we get to UN victory points here and how you're going to gain your victory points for the different cities. Then we get to ending the game for the North Korean military victory or the UN military victory and a listing of all the victory conditions, the advanced game scenario here on page 27, and then the historical perspective by Joe Balkowski. Then we get to the game is history here on page 29, and that's going to give you a breakdown of the historical perspective of the first 12 months of the war, as well as the scenarios that are in the game. So you can see how they reflect what actually happened historically. Lots of great images in here, as well as all the text. Then we get to Korean culture and geography. And we finish out the back of the playbook with some suggested readings as well as divisional affiliation of U.S. Army regiments. And that is a look at everything you get inside of the Korean War Designer Signature Edition. This is a game designed by Joe Balkowski and published by Compass Games. Well, the wait on this one's been a long one. There have been several delays that's pushed this game back multiple times, but finally, the game is available. And it is a classic. This originally was done in 1986 by Victory Games, and now Compass is redoing it. Larger maps, larger counters. They've done some tweaks to the player aids and things like that to make it easier to play, and a little more play balance issues have been put in there by the designer, Joe Balkowski. So it's great to have this one on the table. I gotta say, Compass did a fantastic job with not only giving you enough player aids, but also putting the player aid information out on the maps themselves. So you are definitely not going to be short on needing the information. It's going to be right there in multiple formats on the map or here with your player aids. So that's great. They have the rules of play and then you have the playbook. Everything's broke down for you nice and clean. And the only issue I've noticed so far are the counters. Now that's not a big deal. That's something you can correct with an email to Compass. They'll definitely send you out replacement counters if you run into that issue yourself. I'm not sure how many other people have it, or it could be just Moe's luck. Uh, who knows? But it's really not a big deal uh, the way the counters are misregistered here. Not optimal, but uh, like I said, not game-breaking for me, in my opinion. But really looking forward to getting this one on the table and getting it played, because this is a classic, and I'm going to eat up the entire table playing it, that's for sure, as you can see here. But like I said, looking forward to getting this one on the table and playing it, and I know you guys are as well. So if you didn't pre-order, you can get it now from the Compass website. And if you did pre-order, it should be arriving in the mail any day now.
Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you'd be curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.